Good morning, Tequila Tigers. Welcome to Mrs. White's At Home Read Alouds. Make sure you have a pencil and paper or a sibling or adult to talk to. This is the chapter book edition. Um, so one of the chapter books we've been reading is Crash by Jerry Spinelli. And we um, had finished chapter five last time. So um, in chapter five, Crash was at Penn's house for dinner and he went up to Penn's room and Penn didn't have any toys. And Crash was a little bit mean about it and, um, and very kind of confused about why Penn didn't have any toys. And right at the end of the chapter, Penn's mom called the boys down for dinner. So here we are at dinner, chapter six. At first, I thought they were hamburgers, but the color wasn't right. Fish cakes? I took a bite. Big mistake. Both parents were looking at me. The mother said, Pen, didn't you tell your friend? Webb gawked at his mother. His eyes bulged. A pain look, pained look came over his face. Oops, I think I forgot. Forgot what? I said. You didn't really forget, did you, son? The father said. Webb looked sheepish. I guess not. I guessed I was getting a little tired of all this claptrap. I aimed myself straight at Webb. What am I supposed to know? Webb's eyes shifted to me. I was supposed to tell you we're vegetarians. I had never heard the word. What's that? I said. Meanwhile, I'm thinking, are these people ninja tomatoes or something? We don't eat meat, Webb said. And you didn't tell him, said the father, because you were afraid if you did, he might not want to come for dinner. Webb nodded. His face was in his plate. I still wondered if I heard him right. You mean, you don't eat hot dogs? All three said, no. Hamburgers? No. Chicken? Turkey? Steaks? The father propped his elbows on the table, clamped his hands together, smiled. Crash, I guess we just feel that animals are God's creatures, and it's not for us to, uh, consume them. I still had the first bite in my mouth. I figured whatever it was, it wasn't one of God's creatures. I pointed to my plate. So what's that? The mother chirped. Oat burger, all cheery. Look, said Webb. He poured pancake syrup over his. They're great this way. The father chuckled. I'll relieve the boy's misery. He left the table and came back with a trash basket. He held it at my side. Drop her in here, Crash. I leaned over, opened my mouth, and let the oat burger blob fall into the basket. He took it away. The other stuff on my plate was candied sweet potatoes, string beans, and something I didn't recognize. Little brown clumps. Mrs. Webb saw me looking. They're breaded mushrooms. Try one. I tried one. It was delicious. What do you think, she said. I shrugged. It's okay. Webb piped. John has a great-great-grandfather, and he's 115 years old. Four grown-up eyeballs landed on me. I had to think quick. And I do dive bombing, too, I said. Want to see me? I didn't wait for an answer. I jumped from the table and went behind their sofa. I died over the back, dived over the back of it, landed on my head and hands on the cushion, pushed off, swung my feet around, and landed on the floor. I threw up my arms. Told ya! They clapped. We went back to eating. I stuck with the sweet potatoes and mushrooms. Webb kept pushing the syrup over and telling me what I was missing by giving up oat burgers. To shut him up, I said, Do you know your son is a Quaker? The parents looked at each other, at the kid, at me, and broke out laughing. Yes, said the father, we do know that. As a matter of fact, Mrs. Webb and I happen to be Quakers, too. I said, Oh, does that mean you don't believe in war, either? I'm afraid so, he said. That's too bad, I told them. Your kid is missing out on a lot of great stuff, especially at Christmas. About half my presents are usually war things. Last year I got a G.I. Joe action figure and, oh man, I was getting it now. I just remembered my mazooka. It's a combination machine gun and bazooka. First you wipe out all the infantry with the machine gun, then you go after the tanks. It has an armor-piercing shell. Sets the tank on fire, roasts the guys inside like they're marshmallows. I sat back and let all that sink in, let them see what they were missing. After a while, the father smiled and said, I see. Everybody just chewed for a minute. I have a grandfather named Scooter, I said. Now that is something, said the mother. 
Yeah, I popped another mushroom. So I said, are you poor? The parents started laughing again. I never knew I was so funny. I'm beginning to see why they call you Crash, said the father. Whatever that meant, he went on. To answer your question, no, I wouldn't say we're poor. Would you? Looks like it to me, I said. Your kid has hardly any toys, and you only have one floor on your house. I decided to be nice and not tell them it looked like a garage. More smiles. No, said the father, we're not poor at all. In fact, I would say in a lot of ways we're rich. Could have fooled me. Maybe they have a limo out back, I thought. I ate a few more breaded mushrooms. I looked around the room. I got up. Something had been bugging me from the start, and now I knew what it was. I checked out the kitchen. I took another look at the kids' room. I checked every room in the place. I came back to the table. They were all staring at me. I stared back. Where's the TV? We don't have TV. The words came from the kid. I stared at him. Huh? He said it again. We don't have TV. You're tricking me. He wagged his head, eyes all wide. No, really. What do you do on Saturday morning? I play, read, and we go places, the father chimed in. We're looking forward to visiting places around here, said the mother. This is all new to us, flicker tales. Crash, the father spoke. We're thinking of driving out to the Amish country this Saturday. I understand we're not too far from there. Would you like to come along with us? Webb squawked. Yeah! I'll be watching cartoons, I said. We could wait till they're over. Nah, my dad's taking me to see the Phillies game. He backed off. Well, maybe some other time. Maybe never, I thought. Dessert was gingerbread squares with warm lemon sauce. I ate six of them and got out of there. All right, that's the end of chapter six. So it's time to pause and write or discuss. What do you think of Crash's behavior at Penn's house? What would you think or feel if a friend of yours behaved that way at your house? Make sure to include some details. Go ahead and pause and write or discuss. All right, Tigers, that was chapter six of Crash. I hope you're enjoying this book so far, and I hope you come back soon for more. Bye-bye.